Hello, hello everyone. I am back. Doing another great painting here for you today. Uh, I am Ted Simpson and I am a certified Bob Ross instructor. And I thought today, oh well, I thought today I would just do a, a nice little fall scene for you. Uh, I have to admit, I forgot to put out my paints. I did already prep my 12 by 16 canvas here. With a thin even coat of liquid white, you may notice a little bit of haze or a little bit of blue coloring in there. Well, this is a canvas that I had previously painted. I wasn't happy with the, with the painting. So I just wiped it down. I scraped off the paint, wiped it down with some paint thinner and let it dry and I'm just gonna try again, you know? And look at this, using the big two inch brush, this takes about four seconds here just to drop in a basic sky. Ooh, there we go, look how fast that was. Leaving a little light areas here and there. Now I'm gonna clean out my brush here, right off the bat. I've got some liquid white on it from the base coat. I've got some Prussian blue on it, just left over here from the sky I dropped in. Let me beat the devil out of it here. A couple extra times too. And now I go over it. Just light little crisscross strokes. Soften and move. And I, I assess. I take a look. Very nice. Uh, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to grab a little bit of this titanium white, just beat a little bit into it, into this brush here, and maybe just drop some extra white into these light spots. And just like that, we have some cloud forms here. Just dropping them in, a couple of crisscross strokes, and look at that, we've got instant clouds. If you feel the need, wipe off some of the excess paint, give it a light little crisscross, soften it even more. Boom. Boom, I says. Boom. So, let us, what am I going to do here for this fall scene? We just have to have a little bit of Oh, it's some dirty old brown here. Maybe the uh, most of the leaves are are on their way to the ground here. They're all changed colors. And some of these background trees, oh, they've already lost all their all their leaves. And they're just looking kind of kind of bare, kind of old, kind of dry. So I'm going to take a little bit of this Van Dyke Brown, and let's just put in some, some background stuff here, just tapping in some color, old stuff here. The lighter it is, the further away these are going to look. A little bit more paint on the brush, they, they appear a little bolder, and there'll be some over here, over there. Not really thinking about it too much. Again, look how fast we can do this. Those skies go on super quick. The clouds were super quick. Now some of this background stuff here. A little bit more paint on the brush. Look how I create another layer. It's a little darker in value. Automatically makes it look closer. Different different set of trees. A whole new plane, so to speak. Fast, fast, fast. And just a little bit of this brown. I added just a touch of the uh, Prussian blue. 
look at this, we start to create the foreground automatically. It looks closer because it's darker. Working our way, you know what, let's just work our way down. Let's sort of define the entire painting all at once here. As I'm tapping, it picks up that liquid white and it starts to get lighter on us, so once in a while, I just load a little bit more color, pulling some of this down and tapping it to get a nice even distribution of color. And just tap and move. And it doesn't all have to be one solid color. There's variations of the, of the shades. The more you tap at it, though, the lighter it's going to get, based be because of the uh, because of the liquid white. Look at that! I want this to be a little darker up front. This doesn't take very long here, and you can, of course, go over it a number of times here to get the desired shade. But as long as it's relatively dark, it's going to work out just fine. Alright. I'm going to clean that big old two-inch brush here. Why not? That's about all I'm going to need with that two inch brush. It's too big to, uh, to mess around with too much more than that. So I'm going to take my paint thinner and my liner brush and some of that dark brown color. Really thin it down so it's thin like ink. If you don't know how thin ink is, think milk. Okay, and very, very lightly, let's make some sticks and twigs here. Now you can touch and pull down, or you can touch and pull up and make some little indications of branches or trunks, all sorts of little things happening back here. And when you run out of paint, nearly run out of paint. That's the best time to do the ones off in the background here because it'll appear a little bit lighter and further away. When you have a lot of paint in your brush or it's nice and dark, that's when you do the ones here in the foreground, but it's all right. I'm sure it'll be just fine no matter what you do because we're covering a lot of it up. So you just make out as many of these as you want, off in the back, in the front, whatever. And what brush should we use here? I tell you what, I'm going to break out. This is the half inch round brush, and this is one of my oldest brushes here. The half size round. It's been around. Yeah, let's see here. I'm going to take, oh, let's just go right into some of this yellow. I'm going to pull some of this down, work it into the brush a little bit. See that? You pull and tap, working it in there. Maybe a little bit of the Indian yellow. I'm going to pull some of that in there just to dull it a little bit, not super bright. And I'm tapping to get that paint right up on the tips of the bristles. You push forward a little bit, you start to get that little ridge. That's what we're going for, getting some paint right up on the tips there. Now, you know, I want it a little duller. I'm taking a look here. There we go. Not so bright. Dull it down. It's, it's fall. Some colors are will be super bright, but... Some of them are just going to be kind of dull. And on these ones here in the back, not very distinct. Just tapping with the corner of the brush. 
I'm going to switch over and focusing more on the yellow ochre Indian yellow. Change up the color a little. Put some little indications back there. Maybe a touch of the bright red. Get some, get some going out here. Focusing on the ones in the background, the ones furthest away from us. There we go. Now, working on the ones closer up here, let's make these a little bit different. I'm focusing on the bright red and yellow ochre. Let's tap those in here. Getting some of that color. I'm going to dull it down with a little bit of the yellow ochre so it's not super bright. That's up to you. You get to figure out what, what your fall scene looks like here. And pick out some spots. And if it's not coming off, it's having a little hard time coming off. I'm using a single drop, a single drop of paint thinner. Just enough to loosen it up a little. There it is. Now it comes off. Let's get a little more of the Indian yellow. Change up the colors often here. Get a little bit of variation. I say that a lot. Variation is the key to making this look natural. Maybe, just maybe, if it's still a little too bright for you, or you just want that variation, I'm going to take a little bit of that sap green. Look how quickly that dulls things down. Red and green tend to turn to mud, tend to look like a nice uh, a brown color here, so figure out what old dead things are happening in your scene here and dull things down here and again. Working my way down to the foreground. And you'll notice that some of this I just leave dark. Just leave that background brown color. It's, it's all good. There we go. There it is. All right. I'm cleaning out that half inch brush here. I think I'll come back to it. But for now, let's knock off the excess paint. Ooh All right. So where are we now? We're gonna we're gonna sparkle up this this painting here. I'm gonna use my one inch brush and maybe just a hint of the liquid white. I, I gotta thin this down. This yellow is a little bit thicker, a little firmer color, I should say. So we'll dull it down a little bit. Maybe a speck of green. Not really overly mixing it. Just here and there, adding in these colors. Maybe a little streak of this, that, or the other. Tapping in, getting a nice ridge of paint happening up here. Pushing, feeling that color just right there. Right there. And now we can create a little start of our grass. Tapping, working away. Look at that. The start of our grass. Some various colors here. Oh, look at that. 
all these different little weeds and tall grass change color as well as the weather cools. Let them, let them change color. There's a little bit. Working my way down, just one little bit at a time. Before I do too much else, I think we need a, I think we need our little house. Now, big house, little house, that's up to you. I'm starting here with a little bit of Van Dyke Brown as my base color here. And I think I'll have this about as wide as the large knife blade. Okay, that's about how, how big I want my house to be. So, let's just touch and pull a little roof. Lock in a basic shape and occasionally here you're gonna see me switch to the one inch brush or the, the smaller knife. Boy, I'm having a little time here. And we just create just the basic shape of our cabin, pull in a little bit of an eave, a little wider. There it is. Using these little rolls of paint, I'm going to create just the basic outline here of my cabin. Maybe it's a big old house. Maybe it's a barn. I don't really know at this point. Back here, just... We're just looking to block in a basic color basically dark Ooh, see that it's a little tough here even with the even with the small knife here depending on how small you make your cabin sometimes you can kind of go too small and you just gotta play around here. I'm actually using the short edge of my knife to block in this dark brown. Just darkening this in so the highlights stand out. Making a basic 3D box here. Almost looks like a like a Viking longhouse here. I might have made that a little too long, but that's what happens. You just gotta go with it. Just gotta go with it. When I do my little houseectomy here, that'll that'll shrink it up a little, I think. So let me get a little more paint. Let's darken that, that side just a little bit more. There it goes. Nice and dark. Alright, a little bit of white and my brown. Lighten that up a little bit. There's our highlight color. And with the short edge of my knife and a little bit of this lighter brown, let's, let's put a little indication of a highlight on the front here. Just gently pulling down. There we go. Off in the background, there's really not much there. It's a little too far in shadow here, so it just gets a little bit of, of extra color there. Keep it nice and dark on the side. There we go. For the roof, I'm adding a little bit of the bright red to my highlight color. Just red, white, Ooh. red, I made whoa, way too much. A little bit of red, white, touch of brown. And let's add a little, 
A little indication of some shingles here. Those little taps here and there. You could also use the full length of a knife, make this a little easier. Just an indication here, some, some shingles. There we go. I think just a little bit on the top there. There we go. Sometimes you gotta hold your breath. Now, a little highlight on the eave. There it is. This is just white. There it is. A little longer. There. Well, there we go. Now we need a door. go little door indication there sometimes it's easier to make the door and just come in here the width of the knife and pull down so let's try that hold my breath there that worked out good now if you have a tiny line of white you can line that that roof a little helps it create a little indication here. <laughs> I knew that was going to happen. Sometimes you flick up when you don't mean to. There we go. Now, just a couple extra details here. Maybe a little bit of brightness right there. All right, now I'm just going to cut off this house a little bit. Change the whole shape in just a second, huh? There we go. Now I get to come back, drop stuff there. I get to come back with that one inch brush. And we'll just, we'll continue our, our little grass here. Look at how we just hide some of that edge of our, our house. Make it look a little sunken in. There you go. And clean up the angle a little bit like that. So, I'm going to work. Let's work a little bit more of this here. working my way back, adding some little colors and grasses and all these things. Maybe a little bit of bright red here and there. I don't know what's in your world here, but you just drop it in wherever you think colors need to be. Some of the yellows and the reds, I like that. I just love these little areas here of brights and darks. Okay, now before I do too much else, with just a touch of my Van Dyke Brown, and, oh, let's just use this small little fan brush here. I'm going to pull a little bit of this brown into my fan brush. And let's create a little path going from the doorway. There we go. Sometimes it's, you want to put it in before the grass, sometimes after. I don't think it matters. Whatever works for you. We're just looking for some basic dark color here. 
darker than the background, darker than the foliage here. We want to make it stand out here. If you give it a little bit of a swoop, a very, very shallow smile, that path just looks even more indented in the ground, you know? It looks like it's worn down. There we go. Mostly looking for it to be dark, so when we put the highlights in, the dark looks very shadowy and deep. And the highlight, I'm just using a little bit of white, whatever I have on my palette here. And just grazing some of this over. Not thinking about it too much. We don't really want to blend it in. Make it all go away, at least I don't. You can soften it a little bit. We want to see both the dark and the light. So you drop a little bit of that highlight here and there. Woo, see? That gets awfully strong. If you put a little bit too much in, I clean my brush. Hit it a few times. Watch that brown just absorb it. And you can dull it down to whatever degree of softness you like. There we go. Maybe a little bit of it's catching the light right there. That's what I'm going to say. That's the story I make up. Now, working with my yellows and reds and greens, all these different shades and values here, I'm just going to continue working my way down. And you'll notice here when I'm doing that, I come right on down and I overlap that path a little bit. That helps sink that path a little lower into the scene. Plenty of paint up on the tips of my bristles. Sometimes you do this tapping so much, you're pushing it right back up into the pile. So you can just pull some down again and then do that little snow plow. Get some brights, get some darks and tap. We're actually putting out some texture here. There's some thick paint there. And once in a while, there might be a little bit of dead grass, but there might be a little bit of life left in some of these. A little bit of green will make that come alive a little bit. And it's like adding all these little wedges, all these little indications here. And if it's overlapping more to your liking, you can always take your fan brush and just pull and clean that up. All right, so been a little bit more uh, conservative with my paint here. Take it just a little bit more brown. And my fan brush. tell you what. Let's put a couple of foreground trees in here. Clean it up. Pull down. Maybe another one. Go. Maybe has a little bit of a little bit of a foot on it. There we go. Gotta gotta be able to hold up this tree here, so it has to have a little foot. That's nice and strong and holding that tree up. All right now. that fan brush a bit. Now I'm going to take my knife here and a little bit of this highlight color. It's brown, barely any brown, mostly white. Cut off a little roll and let's just, let's just touch. Uh, you could add 
any and all kind of trees you want here. You could do birch trees, you could do other kinds of leafy trees, or just plain old evergreens, whatever you like. I'm choosing to do these Oh, they're, they're leafy trees here. I haven't, I haven't done the, the branches yet, but just some rough looking bark by touching a little bit of that color here and there. On these hard to reach areas here, you can use the small edge of your knife and put in little, little smaller ones here. And with a little bit of white and some blue in it, I'm just going to put a little bit of cool shadow here on the backside, just, just a little. Uh, so you can see it here and there it's just white with a touch of the phthalo Tu I'm sorry touch of the Prussian blue I had to double check the palette in those little dark areas just like that. Now that we got the trunks in, we got the trunks highlighted, let's, let's, let's make a couple of uh, branches. So just as we did before, I'm thinning down a little bit of the Van Dyke Brown. And maybe here, ooh, let's just see, just make a little, a little branch shape. And I think Bob actually split it off and made this branch kind of come around the front side. A couple of little limbs here. Limit, limit. Lots of limbs. Create some limbs, uh, as many or as few as you want, really. I think of these uh, kind of like little little corners, little elbows, little knees here. So if you kind of like stutter your your uh, brush as you're working your way out, it creates these little bumps and curves and makes it look really really natural. Now, if you just want to lift up and make a couple of small ones here and there, you can do that too. You can make them whatever size and shape you want here. Maybe let this one grow out. A couple of this ones and that ones, you know? As many as you like. Something like that. Maybe this tree has, has some bigger ones here. And all sorts of extra things coming off. But then, I'm going to come back here with just a touch of the liquid white or a single drop of paint thinner. I'm going to come back to a brighter color and I can just load that same brush right into this lighter color and I can add little highlights here. Now I could go back and use my half inch round brush for this too. It's up to you. Whichever one you're feeling. Add in little clumps here. Because they're different, they're nice and bright compared to the ones in the background here. They, they stand out and they make it look more like, uh, you know, the, living there on the tree. There we go. I switch back, I load my brush here, and maybe get some paint right up on the tips of the bristles. Put a little bit of that covering up the foot of the tree. There we go. Gotta have that tree look like it's sitting, growing out from the land, you know? And maybe we got a maybe we got a dead old tree right there. I 
Nice little fall scene just like that. So I'm going to take my thin down paint, I add my little signature in bright red. And look at that, I think we've got ourselves a completed painting once again. All right. Having fun here on uh, today's painting, so I hope you give this a try. Let me know how it goes. Thanks guys, I'll see you in the next video. Take care.